one of the more hot button issues out there is whether or not given equal amounts of caloric intake and equal amounts of activity and equal amounts of nutrients, et cetera, whether or not restricting food to a particular window biases more weight loss toward fat loss versus loss of other tissues. Because of course, when we lose weight, we can lose that from any number of different storage sites within the body, muscle, water, glycogen, or fat. Now, this is such a hot button issue that I almost don't want to get into it, but I'm going to get into it anyway, because there are data that are very interesting. This is covered in the review that I mentioned earlier that describes how if people follow a time-restricted feeding schedule for long periods of time, so 60 days or longer, there are some metabolic changes in the way that people metabolize energy that do seem to shift the system toward more fat loss relative to burning of other tissues when in a state of caloric restriction. And I want to say when in a state of caloric restriction, because there's really no way to cheat the system. There's no way that you can ingest far more calories than you burn or excrete. When I say excrete, you know, I certainly don't suggest this, but there, you know, bulimics and other people that have eating disorders will use laxatives as a way to eliminate food quickly from their system. So it can't be converted into fat or other forms of energy. That's a very in that case, it's a pathological situation. But in general, calories in versus calories out, as I mentioned earlier, is this kind of foundational element. But in states of caloric restriction, meaning sub-maintenance intake, time-restricted feeding does seem to bias more of the energy burned to compensate for that deficit from fat. And the way it accomplishes it is very interesting. It turns out that it drives more fat loss by way of increasing a hepatic lipase. This is something called LIPC. Hepatic means of the liver and lipase, which anytime you hear ASE is, means it's an enzyme. So it seems to increase hepatic lipase. So it increases the enzyme that metabolizes fat for lipolysis and energy production and reduces something called CIDEC, C-I-D-E-C, which is a lipid droplet associated and lipolysis inhibitor. Now that's a mouthful no pun intended, but what Cydec really is, this lipid droplet associated molecule is it can inhibit lipolysis. So extended periods of time restricted feeding, meaning eight hour feeding window or 10 hour feeding window that's obeyed for several months or more seems to allow the system to shift toward burning more fat or rather using a higher percentage of fat when in a caloric deficit. Now, I doubt that this is going to resolve the truly barbed wire, almost hairball, ridiculous online debates about whether or not time-restricted feeding is better than another feeding schedule. Look, I don't think any particular feeding schedule is holy. If you are subcaloric, meaning fewer calories burned than calories ingested, you're going to lose weight. But the data seem to point to the fact that if you do time-restricted feeding for a fairly long duration of time and you maintain that, that you are increasing these lipases that increase lipolysis, energy use from fat, and you are decreasing the lipid droplet associated lipolysis inhibitors. So it's both a, you're removing the brake and you're pressing on the accelerator of fat loss. And I think that this logically points to a case in which using time-restricted feeding with a subcaloric intake seems to be, at least to my mind, the most scientifically supported way to ensure that a significant portion of the weight that one loses is from body fat storage.